guys. Uh, just wanted to touch base with Tony again. Tony, introduce yourself. How's it going, guys? Uh, if you guys remember, I guess last March, June? June. June. Yep. Uh, Tony did his first show here on Nassau County, Long Island. We have a lot of shows out in Suffolk County. They all do very well. We have shows upstate. They do very well. Uh, but this is like the first Nassau County show, the first show kind of near New York City. And he kicked off that show last June. Um, it was absolutely phenomenal, guys. So we have another one coming off November 25th. Yep. Same location. That's what you got to look up right there. Get yourself some merchandise. You got t-shirts and sweatshirts this time. So long story short, guys, we just wanted to touch base with Tony again. Kind of go over um, our experience with his first show and kind of talk about what he's changing coming up and what the future plans are for the Nassau uh, County Expo. So long story short, guys. Um, Tony put us right in the front last time. We had an absolute blast. There was a lot of foot traffic. Uh, a lot of people stopping by. There was music playing. Uh, it was a really, really nice venue. And ultimately, guys, there was people that came down to that show uh, that I speak to on social media and other outlets that don't necessarily go to your Suffolk County shows or your upstate shows. They kind of came in from a little bit west, I mean, Pennsylvania, New Jersey. They came in from New York City, too. So you have a lot of clientele and a lot of reptile breeders and reptile keepers that kind of wouldn't come out all the way into Suffolk County, ended up coming out to the Nassau County show, and we had an absolute blast. We saw Tony running around, he had uh, kids shows going on, you had, you, had, you had the iguanas running around, you had the tortoises running around, all types of vendors, there's a lot of different vendors there that weren't necessarily there from the last show. So I had a blast, I intend on doing uh, his show every single time they have it going on. With that being said, you know on this channel we like to talk about the good, the bad, the ugly, and the complete and total transparency. So first and foremost, a lot of these expos have been going on for years, right? A lot of them have been going on for nearly 15, 20, 25 years. I have to give him props because everyone talked about it, that the fact that, that you threw together this show for the first time, it was absolutely phenomenal. It, uh, it had everything you needed, and it was, it was advertised as planned, and because of the advertisements, a lot of people came through, and it was didn't seem like it was the first time show. To be honest with you, just from a financial standpoint, we did pretty well at the show. For a first time show, nobody really expected to sell many animals. We didn't expect to have a lot of foot traffic, but you actually sold all your bracelets out, right? We sold our 2,500 bracelets by, I think it was 1.30 p.m. Yeah. I mean, so we estimate we had over 3,000 people walk through the door. Yeah, guys, I mean, at one point there was lines. Uh, people were trying to get over to our table, Dave's table, you know, Edge Exotics next door. And people really couldn't even get, there's that many people going there. So everyone there, that's one thing. A lot of the keepers, a lot of the breeders, a lot of the, the vendors of the shows always kind of gossip and talk, talk to each other. That's the humidifier turning off. Uh, talk to each other about what's going on. We all were really pleasantly surprised at how well we did, just from a financial standpoint. Um, and just from the standpoint of meeting people that we didn't necessarily will meet at the Suffolk County shows or upstate shows. So they decided to come out to the Nassau County show because it doesn't seem that far. It's just right outside of New York City. With that being said, you did a phenomenal job planning last Thank time. Thank you, I appreciate it. What would, you, what would you change from the first time and what did you change going into November 25th? So being that our tour was our first show, obviously it was a huge learning experience. We, in my opinion, we did phenomenal I compared to what we could have imagined. You yep. know, I thought a lot more would go wrong than did. And things did go wrong, but we were on top of it. We, you know, we kept it going. Uh, our bathroom situation, that was number one. We had a lot of complaints about bathroom, and that was because we severely underestimated the amount of people that would show up. Okay. Uh, clearly, our advertising worked. Yeah, I mean, listen, it, it's, uh, I think a lot of the miscues, which there weren't many, in the first show were really just due to the fact that Tony didn't trust himself enough, right? You didn't think there'd be that many people there. No. So you know what? The bathrooms there at um, at the actual venue should be fine. And ultimately they were not fine. No. Because 3,000 people showed up. It wasn't necessarily that he didn't have bathrooms or they were dirty or whatever the case may be. It was just, there wasn't enough. It really that simple because there's too many people there. So you change that situation, yep. right? So in November, we're gonna have these beautiful wedding trailer bathrooms. <laughs> we dropped a lot of money on them. There's not gonna be anybody passing out mints in there, but they are nice. Uh, I believe we're gonna have a total of ten toilets in there, plus the porta potties that we had last okay. time. Uh, so yeah, the bathroom situation is solved. All right. So segueing from bathrooms, you're also gonna have food trucks there now. Yes. So uh, another issue was we didn't have anyone selling food. You know, everyone was getting hungry. I'm sure you were. You're a vendor. Um, yeah, I'm always. Hungry. You know how it is. It's an early day. Uh, so now we have two food trucks. We have one selling Greek food, and we have another one selling Mexican food. And where are they going to be located? Right in the parking lot? They're going to be right out front. There's okay. no way you can miss them. Yeah. So I remember last time, how many vendors did you have last time? We had 130 tables sold. You have the same amount this time? We have we have 15 tables remaining. So we have two weeks for 
goes to Oh, Joe. so people can still get into the show. Yep. All right, so you, there's 15 spots remaining, guys. So you want to definitely make sure you get into it now. It's probably going to sell relatively quick. People always seem to wait until the last minute to get shit done. Definitely. But now, it was there pretty much the same vendors? You have new vendors coming no, in? No, we have new vendors. That's what I'm yeah. excited about, honestly. Well, I, I, so I want to touch base on that. We kind of That's what I told Tony. I, I, have a, I, I fully and totally believe, guys, that this will be the next big show in the Northeast, Thank right? You. you have a lot of these big shows... You know, you have Tinley, you, you, have, you have the Expos in uh, California, you have, you know, St. Louis, and you have Arlington, you have Florida. We don't really have that big one in the Northeast area. We, you know, we, the closest one, too, is really Tinley, right? You have, like, the Gettysburg one. We don't have that big mega house, mega party, if you will, um, show. And I understand that is also because in New York, you don't have a lot of the species you can have in different shows. Yep. We can solve those issues, too, right, with permits and stuff like that. But I truly believe that... Tony has uh, the drive, the, the charisma, and to actually take it to where we can have our big show in the Northeast, all right? And that, that's ultimately what your goal is, and that's what I'd love to see also. So I, I mean this from the bottom of my heart, guys. If, if you're a breeder in the North, Northeast area, and you're thinking about going into the show, I, I would get into it now. It's like anything else. Tony knows me now. Tony saw spot. We do these interviews, right? We text pretty consistently, whatever the case may be. And of course, as a breeder, I want to get in on the foot level for this show. So I highly recommend if he has 15 spots left and you're thinking about making the trip from wherever, PA or Virginia, New Jersey, I would get in on it now because I have a feeling this show is pretty much going to sell out. Let's be honest here. What's the ultimate goal? What is your goal venue? What's my goal venue? I think you know the answer to that. Nassau Coliseum. We're going to work our way up there. And I... I truly believe we're going to get there, but I want to prove to everybody that I'm capable of it first. You know, I, I definitely think I want to show everyone that we can consistently pull in a big crowd. So when that bigger venue comes and people are traveling from a far distance to get there, you know, they know that I'm capable of doing this. Well, I mean, that that is the ultimate plan, guys. I don't know if you're not familiar with Nassau Coliseum. That's where the Islanders used to play. Uh, this is where all the big shows are when it comes to like cars or uh, boatings or hunting expos. This is a big, big, big venue on Long Island. I would say we have UBS Arena now. It's in Queens or right in Nassau County. But I would say Nassau Coliseum. If if, if you're in Nassau Coliseum, that's a big deal. It's uh, equivalent to Tinley Park. It's actually it's bigger than Tinley Park. It's equivalent to all these big venues. That is Tony's goal. And I think I kind of forced her that down your throat. You did. Bit. You know. You know. You did. At first, big. I took it as a joke. That last video no, we no, posted, no. I was like, oh, I titled it that. No. Nope. But now it's it's becoming a reality. You know. All right. So I, I I'm. I'm really looking forward to it. Now, again, guys, it's nice to have local shows, but more importantly, it's nice to have shows that are in, like, the metropolitan area. That is closer to New York City, closer upstate. So we do have the Brentwood show here on the Island, which I enjoy doing also. But let's be honest, if you live in White Plains or you live in New Jersey, that's a hike, okay? When it comes to this show, you're right outside. You're right near the Nassau Coliseum. You're not far from it. So Tony definitely is all in on this, guys. And I think that's important when... You're talking about putting your name out there as a vendor, putting your name out there as a breeder, or attaching. I'm clearly attaching myself to Tony here. And I wouldn't do that if I didn't think, um, first and foremost, he loved the animals and he wanted to actually expand this for all the right and good reasons. That being said, guys, he, he fixed the, the bathroom situation, which some people complained about. I can give a shit less. I'll go to the tree. But he also, he's got food coming. Now, you're also still going to do your, your educational show. That, that is what you do normally, yeah, right? Yeah, So, you know, we like to change things up from the typical expo, which is basically a marketplace. We want to pull in fresh new faces because I'm looking at this as a long-term thing. We're going to get these kids in the neighborhood and the area, you know, surrounding areas, interested in reptiles. And the next five, ten years, you know, they're, they're going to come up. They're, sure. they're our next, exactly. You know, that, that's our market right there. So I do educational shows. I set up a corner where there's games. We do two shows throughout the day where we present some cool animals like the alligator, snapping turtle, and you know the boa. They can come by, hold a snake, take a picture with the lizard, pet or tortoises, and stuff like that. It's a lot of fun over there. We sell merchandise for the expo too over there. So, so again, keep in mind, guys. Now again, I'm not knocking any of the other expos, but I enjoy the other expos. But a lot of the other expos don't have things like this, right? You literally have a guy. Who what's what you do? You go, you go around, right? You, you, you do the educational shows. You worked at Nerd. You worked at all these places. Like he has the experience to put on these shows, and he actually does it. So when you bring your kids there, you don't necessarily have to go to buy animals. A lot of people go to purchase animals, right? And that's my goal. But you can go there. You can bring your kids there just to maybe get them into the hobby. You know, he's gonna have his bow. He's gonna have his alley of He's gonna have his sulcata. He's yeah. gonna have all these animals. You can kind of take a look at. And he's gonna put on educational shows a couple times throughout the day which I think isn't, doesn't really happen at other uh, expos. With well, that being said, if we continue to expand and he eventually gets to Nassau County, I assume you're just going to expand that also, correct? Yeah, probably. Okay. Absolutely. So what type of animals are you going to have that you're actually going to be showing off at 
you know, educational portion of the expo. In the educational show. So we're definitely going to have that big sulcata again. Okay. You know, that over 110 I, pounds of sulcata. I'm partial to tortoises, so. Yes, I know you like it. Yeah. Did you get to check them out last time? I did, time? I did. Yeah, I did, he's, I did. he's a good tortoise, a uh, mortise. Uh, then we're also going to have our boa constrictors. I have two boas that I use in my educational shows. They're amazing. They're a little over eight feet long. So oh, wow, nice. they're monsters, but they're very easy to handle for boas. So we get some nice pictures in. You go behind the backdrop. It's a lot of fun. Uh, on top of that, we're going to have an albino iguana uh, whose nails have been trimmed, and we're going to be able to hold him. Oh, nice. Uh, and then we're going to have a couple little games for the kids and stuff. That's going to be a lot of fun. Awesome, guys. So listen. It's one of those situations where he, he's trying to, Tony's trying to get together an expo where it's more than just an expo, just a marketplace, if you will. Mm -hmm. And I, I fully believe this is going to be the next big show. And that is ultimately the goal, right, guys? So make sure you stop by November 25th. He's got 15 tables available. I'm sure hopefully they go quick. I'm sure they will go quick. I got two tables there. I'll be there. Nash will be there. Kev will be there. Paul will be there. Our crew will all be there. We intend on doing every show he actually does. So we'll be there pretty much every single time. Oh, yeah. I already told Tony, like, just always give me two tables. Just, like, just allot me two tables. So, November 25th, guys, definitely check it out. If you're interested in vending, uh, what's your Instagram name? For the NASA? The oh, all of it. Well, Uncle Tony's Reptile Shacks for the educational shows. Okay. okay. And but if you is... want information on this, the best thing to do is to look up Nassau Reptile Expo online. You can find my website. Okay, perfect, guys. Get so your tickets on there. You can buy your tables on there. So definitely reach out. All right, I'm going to post this on YouTube right away just so we can get more traction for them. But I'm looking forward to it. It'll probably be the last show I'm vending for this year. Um, and we're going to be there with our entire crew and some nice high-end animals, guys. So definitely take a look. Definitely check out Tony. Get on board now if you're a vendor because I have a feeling that eventually these tables won't be readily available. So, anything else? That's so, all. Thank you. Appreciate it. Right. Make sure you check out this guy's booth when you get over there. He has some crazy stuff he was just yeah. showing me. It would be nice. We got some really that wild would be nice. Listen, I appreciate you guys watching. Um, looking forward to the show. November 25th. Be safe. Watch the six.